Where can you find a laboratory that constantly analyzes the molecules in the air, that can detect and discriminate between one trillion different odors? We all have one. The way the nose detects and processes smells is more complex than any laboratory, which is why scientists don't completely understand how the sense of smell works. Sense of smell for humans was once thought to be inferior to other animals, like snakes, insects, rodents, and dogs, who can decipher information from smell, such as whether the animal they smell is the same species, male or female, or even to specifically identify who that individual is based on their scent. When dogs go for a walk, they sniff around to get the news. Humans, on the other hand, have no interest in knowing who left urine behind on the grass, but that doesn't mean our sense of smell is inferior. The myth that human sense of smell is inferior originated in the 19th century, when comparative anatomy studies focused on the ratio of brain volume dedicated to smell compared with total brain volume. The act of smelling is called olfaction. The olfactory bulb is the part of the brain that receives information about what smells the nose detects. The proportion of the brain taken up by the olfactory bulb is much smaller for humans than other animals, and humans who also appear to be less influenced by smell than other animals. In place of their proportionality, smaller olfactory bulb humans were found to have a larger frontal lobe, responsible for speech and higher intelligence. It was therefore theorized that humans had sacrificed this more primitive part of the brain in exchange for expansion of higher reasoning centers and rational thought. For humans, having a bad sense of smell was more a badge of distinction from other mammals rather than a shortcoming. However, none of this was based on actual experiments testing human sense of smell. It is true that the proportion of the brain that the olfactory bulb region takes is 200 times larger for mice and 40 times larger for dogs compared with humans. But the absolute size of the olfactory bulb is larger in humans than in mice. What may be even more important is the number of neurons in the olfactory bulb, which happens to be similar across a range of species. Scientists estimate that about 10 million neurons are needed to achieve olfactory function. It turns out that sensitivity to scent depends on which scent is relevant to that animal. With some scents, humans can even beat out mice, pigs, and dogs in their sensitivity. Hunting dogs are great at tracking pheasants through a field. Humans may not be great at that, but if the smell of chocolate is dragged through a field, humans can indeed follow that scent trail. In 2006, a research study was conducted at the University of California, Berkeley, where human subjects were asked to follow a 10-meter scent trail of chocolate essential oil in an open grass field wearing a mask, earmuffs, and other equipment to block vision, sound, and touch. 21 out of 32 subjects succeeded, and with practice, they could perform this task more quickly. When dogs meet, they spend a lot of time sniffing each other. We humans unconsciously smell our hands after shaking hands with strangers, an act that is thought to give us information about others. Body odor can influence mate choice and also communicate anxiety or aggression to others. By sniffing sweat, people can distinguish between different genetic variants in a group of genes that contribute to body scent and are a part of the immune system. In a famous t-shirt smelling experiment, women sniffed shirts worn by different men and preferred the scent of those that came from men that were genetically dissimilar to them in this group of genes. Mice also show this preference when selecting mates, and it's believed that this situation produces more successful offspring by optimizing their immune system or as a way to avoid inbreeding. Mothers and babies also recognize each other by scent. Scent attracts newborn babies to suckle milk. New mums can distinguish their babies from others by smell as well. Humans may even be able to remember a person by scent and identify a criminal in a police lineup. Researchers tested this by having volunteers watch a video of a man assaulting a woman while sniffing a scent they were told was of the suspect. The volunteers could recognize that scent amongst five odor samples later. Smelling the body odor of others who are stressed out can make us feel on guard. People will twist up their face if they smell the odor of someone who watched something disgusting, even though they didn't watch it themselves. Here is an example of smelling fear. People who jumped out of a parachute the first time had their sweat collected and smelled by research subjects having their brain viewed by fMRI, a type of brain imaging. Amazingly, the research subjects' brains lit up in the left amygdala where fear is processed. 
How do noses perform these remarkable tasks? At the top of the inside of the nose is a tissue specialized for sensing smells called the olfactory epithelium. This tissue contains hundreds of nerve cells called olfactory neurons that recognize particular odor molecules. Other cells in the olfactory epithelium tissue provide support and structure. The nose and brain are separated, but there are holes through which wire-like nerve projections communicate smells from the nose to the brain. Information about smells received by olfactory neurons are sent through nerves to the olfactory bulb region of the brain above. If you were to zoom in on the olfactory epithelium up on the roof of the cavity inside the nose, you would see that the chemical detector portions of the olfactory neurons contain little antenna-like structures. These structures are called olfactory cilia, and the cilia are covered with olfactory receptors. Olfactory receptors are physical barriers between the brain and the outside environment and transfer information to the brain from the environment. Olfactory receptors are composed of proteins that form pockets of different shapes that certain odor molecules can fit into. A fit between the odor molecule and the olfactory receptor triggers a response from the olfactory neuron. Each olfactory neuron has one type of olfactory receptor displayed on the surface of the cilia. A single olfactory receptor can fit with or bind to multiple types of odor molecules, also called odorants. For each odorant, there are multiple olfactory neurons which are triggered, which produces a specific pattern of signal to the brain. Individual odorants like acetic acid and dimethyl trisulfide smell of vinegar and cabbage on their own, but they are a part of a group of 25 odorant molecules that when presented together produce a neural response that our brain recognizes as dark chocolate. Each odorant will activate a certain combination of olfactory neurons which will generate a unique pattern of electrical signals. Smell signals are first received in the olfactory bulb of the brain and then travel to the primary olfactory cortex region. From here they are redirected to other areas of the brain where odors can be perceived consciously and also to areas of the brain responsible for emotions, memory storage, behavior, and sensations. Because of this wiring, certain smells can bring forth strong memories and emotions. Exactly how our olfactory system allows us to perceive and distinguish between a trillion different odorants is a mystery that's still being unraveled. But the parts that they have worked out have been mimicked by engineers in the design of sensors called electronic noses. Electronic nose sensors have applications in monitoring the environment for pollution, diagnosing disease, and detecting microbes in food that could make us sick. Speaking of being sick, when we have a cold with a stuffy nose, food doesn't seem to have much taste. Olfactory receptors are important for both smell and taste. When we eat, there are two pathways for smells to reach our olfactory receptors. Some of the smell goes right up our nostrils, during chewing, odorants can also travel to the inside of the nose from the back of the throat. This mouth smelling is how we perceive the flavor of mint, strawberry, or vanilla, as there are no taste buds for these. Sense of smell declines as we age too, and this can cause a loss of enjoyment in eating, and in some cases malnutrition in elderly people. We tend to undervalue our sense of smell, but when it malfunctions, there are lots of dangers that we may not be alerted to, such as the smell of smoke, gas leaks, spoiled food, or spillage of chemicals. Even when our sense of smell is functioning normally, we may perceive the smell or taste from a particular odor molecule differently from someone else. This is because small differences in the genetic code of olfactory receptor genes affect how well olfactory receptors bind to odor molecules. The strength of this binding can impact the signal sent to the brain. Altogether, we have 400 olfactory genes, and each olfactory gene codes for an olfactory receptor protein, which is the part that acts like a sensor. Do you like cilantro? The difference in the genetic code for an olfactory receptor causes some people to describe cilantro as unpleasant and soapy. If certain olfactory receptors are exposed to the same odor over and over again, we become temporarily desensitized to the smell. This is how we can become nose blind to bad smells in the house, such as a stinky dog or smelly shoes. It's as if the olfactory receptors that are sensitive to these odors need a break. The receptors move inside the cell, so they're no longer on the surface. Great for you, but not so much for your friend who just popped over for a visit. By the way, thank you for popping by to visit our channel. Please subscribe to find out more about how the human body works.